When I was 10, I realized I was white. When I was 12, I realized I wanted to be thin. When I was 15, I realized that actually, no, I wasn't white. When I was 18, I reached my goal of under 100 pounds. It's strange to be inside of a body that never quite fits. Skin too light to be part of a community that you identify with, but then if I was darker, I'd be less worthy of respect. Waist too thin to be healthy, yet reflective of the images of beauty that suffocate the media. We villainize fat and weight because we think that equates to unhealthiness. But am I healthy if my mind races with anxiety when I'm not perfect? That I feel more beautiful when I fit into children's clothes? How I am consumed by thoughts of guilt? Never not adding up calories in, calories out. It feels wrong to encompass both the oppressor and the oppressed. The politics of assimilation taught me to distance myself from non-white aspects of my identity and only accept the white half. Yet still receiving, what are you, questions because people can't seem to categorize me. Hearing a non-Western name but seeing my light skin, that doesn't make sense. Where are you from? Because you can't be from here. I already have restricted myself and my body for so long, feeling proud when the calculator in my head equates to a negative net intake at the end of the day. But that's desirable, says society, making me believe I've achieved ideal beauty even though my organs are starting to fail. The constant affirmations on my success of being so healthy, orthorexia deceives you like that. An exotic beauty, that's also desirable, society says. Having just enough brownness in my skin and in my name to be uniquely attractive, yet still white enough to receive privilege and respect. When I was 21, I gave up on pleasing everyone. When I was 21, I gave up on destroying my body. When I was 21, I accepted my ambiguity and learned to sit with my confusion. When I was 21, I accepted myself.